For the third time this week, new and updated mods are out now for Farm Sim 22. In total, 34 mods were released today on the in-game mod up. All platforms got 20 new, though one of them's already been removed, and 11 updates. At PC and Mac players got one new and two updates. We'll look at each mod, including customization of features, as well as the new maps. That way, you can better decide what you want to download and what you don't. Starting off with our new ones for all platforms, we got something cool. The John Deere S7 from Agritono. There are two models within this. We have the 600, and then we have a version with the 7, 8, and 900. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the S7 900, the big boy. 617 horsepower, though if you want to go down, you have 320 horsepower, 382 rather, available on that S7. Taking a look at grain carrier capacities, we have 10,600. We can add some arches, add it with a tarp, and uh, well, that's about it. We've also got the setup in not a square, but kind of a round, but still 10,600. And then we also have the 14,100 liter capacity version as well. We can also do the uh, big setup, or if you're like me and you prefer the foldable sets, well, we have that too. Love those. Engine options, as we mentioned, we've got the three there. Wheel brands, we have Continental. We also have Michelin setup, Trelleborg, Lizard, Continental, back and forth, all that good stuff. We do have some track versions on here, in case you want to go with some tracks, which is very, very cool. And of course, big old dual wheels. Do we have Michelin duels? Tell me we do. Come on. Of course we do. We have to. Yeah, I love those. Let's go with that. Front signaling, we have standard and signaling bar. We also have reflective signaling and reflective signaling number two. So kind of a US and EU setups on there. Numbers, we've got one through number nine. We got three for Dale. Rear signaling, we'll jump around towards the back side. Standard, we have a triangle. Then we have the signaling bar, where we do both of those and the reflective EU styling on there if you want to. Uh, chipper for the back, we've got a couple different models through there. Three different ones to choose from. Warning stickers and cameras, we've got uh, with or without. We also have uh, added stickers or just camera stuff. It's kind of nice. Exhausts, we have a couple different models for exhaust and window film. Have a couple setups for the windows. Monitors on the inside. It's kind of hard to see, at least from out here. So I've went with a standard window film. We have a G4 and a G5, and we can add GPS to the G5. Rear gauge, we have standard. Let's say rear gauge. This is going to be your rear axle spacing. As well as the pipe on the back, we have 6.9, 7.9, 8.9. And then we have uh, adjustable, aka, I think that means foldable? Or is that going to be the very end? Ah, it is adjustable. Well, that's my fault. And then we have the with fold. Uh, so, ooh, an adjustable with fold. Very cool. So tons of pipe options on that. A lot more than I was expecting. Plus, we have our license plate. We can adjust a few things. We've got the left window there and the right. Those are both going to be done at the exact same time. We've also got a setup here for the back. So you can kind of go up and down with that and then lastly we've got the ladder on the side this is a manual setup for the ladder and if you want a massive corn head to kind of go along with that well here we go the john deere 627c it's finally here uh, on here we have options for light yes or no and then we've got setups for the colors now this is kind of nice you can actually go with like a black setup if you want to i prefer the uh john deere yellow or the john deere green and yeah yeah john deere yellow looks pretty good on that let's go back there though there we go again 13.4 meter working with making it one of the largest corn heads that we've got in the game and might even be the largest john deere branded corn head that we've got in the game let's get ourselves one of those let's grab our combine harvester here and test it out we do have a pretty awesome unfolding animation check that out all the way down and as you would expect looks good and they work great together next we got the new holland tk4 series this is from pepe 978 and we have two versions in here we have one with an iron track and one with the rubber track options uh heads up the uh, track options are individual like that so instead of selecting them like you would wheels well they're just different models all together Let's take a look at the rubber track version. 85 horsepower, manual transmission, 96 liters of fuel. It goes seven miles an hour. Slow boy. Configuration, we have standard, 120 kg front weight, 280, 350, and then back to standard again. Engine options, we have 85 horsepower, 99, 107, and then we have similar options with a red version here as well. Love that. Then we have the protective arch, or I call it the headache rack at the time, and then we have side protections. You can add those as well. And if you like that version but prefer the iron track, well, you can do it. You're good to go. From NASIF and AJ3D, we have the Volvo ML Series. In the mod hub, it just shows as NL Series. 211 horsepower. We got a manual transmission on there. 480 liters of fuel. 74 miles an hour. 
Weighs 10.6 tons. Configuration, we have a 6x2, 6x4, and back and forth between both of those. A little bit different setup there on the uh, rear fifth wheel, but that's about it. Engine options, 211, 320, 340, 360 horsepower. Also have a 410 and then back down. So you can really take this down. We don't have a lot of semi-trucks that are newer-ish looking that have low horsepower. So maybe that'll be what you're looking for. Design options, we have one, two, three, and then back down. Mirrors option number one, two, and back in. Radio antennas, you can throw those on there if you want to. I'm not a fan, so we'll take those off. Stickers, a hey, different colors of stickers. Looks like the color is the only thing that's changing through there we also have a no option if you want to go with that make it clean decorative lanterns we've got yellow and all kinds of stuff i'm guessing this will be around towards the back yeah that's where we normally where those are let's go with yellow why not let's do it decorative lighting on here now this i'm not too sure about oh it's on the inside like facing forward not used to seeing that kind of thing. We'll go with a red option there. Airfoil, we have a deflector, which adds to the back. Then we can do a top airfoil if you want. I like the deflector. We'll go with that. Stair lights, we've got orange, red, white, or not. I will go with white there. Main colors, we have all these different ones, but we'll go with this because it's like a diet toothpaste tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like that. Fender options. We have stainless steel or pretty much whatever you want to go with through there. I like the stainless steel, especially with the uh, the design that we've got in the back. Front grill option. You can change that up if you want to. Rims. We've got all kinds of stuff for that. And then we have a license plate. I think to save my sanity, we'll go with this setup. Now, what can we do with this? Sounds pretty good. I'll give it that much. Uh, let's see. We have raise and lower ladder tool. Do we have ladder tool? Those are not ladder tools. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I guess it works, so that's fine. We got steer wheel, of course, and then we have extend arm crane, which is the other one. Uh, somebody copy and pasted it from a different mod, didn't they? Yeah. And then what else do we have? We've got kneeling along towards the front, so that's pretty cool. Uh, in the United States, those uh, lights face forward would be pretty illegal, at least here in North Carolina. Uh, but as far as everything else goes, not a bad truck. Next, we have the Lizard 608D. We actually had their, what, their 1620 release like a week ago? Not too long ago at all. Well, hey, we got another one for you, the 608D. This is a couple things. We have a bolt carrier as well as an animal transport. So let's take a look at options here. 85 horsepower on here, and it goes 49 miles an hour. Emblem 608D. We can also change up that logo a little bit with different signs if you want to. Wheel setups, we have a standard. Then we have standard number two with those white walls on there. Then we have a couple different design options, and that is it. Decorative sash. These are your livery options. We have a couple different sets through there, including different colors. PX antenna, we've got those. Sun shield, we have a couple different designs for the sun shield on the front. Actually, I like the clear one, so we'll go with design two. Bumper, we have a couple different options for that as well, depending on which ones that you like. Uh, that looks real interesting we'll go with it <laughs> exhaust setup this is going to be around towards the back uh first one comes out the driver's side then we have one that comes all the way out the passenger side and then it looks like the tip changes between some of the other ones so just go with the standard i like that a uh, marker on here this is going to be i guess around towards the front to show you where your bumper is uh embellishment rear light are these those color lights yeah uh, these must be pretty popular uh, around Brazil and South America. Cause we do not have them here, at least not that I know of. Steering wheel colors. Well, not not like that anyway. Not with multiple color options. We have different colors there: black and white. White steering wheel would get dirty pretty quick, so we'll keep that black. Rear hub caps. We've got a couple different designs through there, but nothing on the front. Those are completely separate, and they are decorative as well, so you can make this kind of like a show truck or something. That is pretty cool. Uh, as far as your capacity goes, we have a plastic tank. We can also go with a rounded tank, which increases our fuel from 80 to 100 liters, and then we could go up to 120 with a square tank if you want to. Then we get around to color options. So starting off, we have our main color. Let's go up here to the uh, green water, aka toothpaste tractor diet. Then we have the hub colors themselves. We'll go with a nice yellow in the middle chassis color we'll go with black through there and then we have our rim colors we'll go black here as well not the most beautiful truck that i've ever made but hey it is what it is let's jump in real quick check it out see what we got 
Looks like we can't do anything, but I do like the custom sounds on there. Uh, it looks also like if there's anything with chrome, you're not gonna be able to change that. This thing moves too, man. Let's go. As for your connections, we have the bulk carrier 4x2. Uh, this is starting off as a standard. Then we go to bulk, which doesn't say how much it holds. Then we have a capacity of 14,000 and back down to standard. Looks like if we go capacity 14, we get all of the options. So we will stick with that design. We have black, white, back and forth between those. Then we have another design, which is black and white. And then a third design, which is black and white. Main color options, so let's go with a uh, green water diet toothpaste there. Then we can change up the, the cover, and then a uh, frame, and then another uh, stripes. And there you go, that's that. And then we have our animal transport. Looks like we have the same options through here, except for no cover. And that's going to hold six cattle, eight pigs, six sheep, and six horses. Next up is our bell conveyor belt. We haven't seen anything like this since like Farm some 17, I feel like. Uh, this will drive three miles per hour because it is a belt system. We do have all the colors of the rainbow for this, which is very, very nice. The wheels do not change. Uh, and at the end of the day, it, it's a conveyor belt for belts. Bells. Bell conveyor belt. Pellet palette. Next up is the 770, more specifically the Case IH 770. This is a disc arrow, 180 horsepower is required on here, 6.2 meter working with the nine miles an hour. We can unfold it, which is nice. Uh, Will Brands bring us Trelleborg BKT. Uh, most of you are probably gonna be going BKT, so we'll go with that. They do have a Hungarian rim, which I will say I think looks better, but we'll stick it with the US today. Decal configurations, we have the US as well as the our IH and case. Then we have a Hungarian IH and case decals. That's pretty cool, man. Uh, wheel lifting cylinders. We have one or two wheel lift. Let's see, that's round towards the back. There we go. And then we have our colors. Now, main color, we have the yellow, which is not something we normally see, or all of the above. Spring color, we can change up the spring around towards the front. And then we have our rim colors. So, a lot of color options on here. There we go. That should stir the pot a little bit. Next is our Wivon APX RS, and then we have the 440 in here. Uh, I don't know if this is a mod pack or what, but it is from Mateo and Nico. So, uh, what up, dudes? 120 horsepower on this Cultivator, 4.4 meter working with at 8 miles an hour, and there is no customization. We did have the resistance weight on the mod hub. However, this was removed like before I could even hardly start recording. So, uh, just heads up if you've got it. Yay. Uh, I don't know what the dealio is with this one, but uh, it has been removed. So heads up, weighs 1.8 tons. Next is our Lizard Hydroglide XL Header Storage System. This is very, very easy to figure out. So uh, look on the ground. We have a two and a one, and we have a panel. Now the panel has an emergency stop icon, but we don't need that. Uh, this is for storing headers. So you set the header on it and it kind of moves around. Now. Let's go over here. We have rack number two. We could click that. What that's going to do is bring down the first set and let's just place our headers on there and then it raises it up. Very, very cool. But if you want to store one on the very top, make sure you take the one off number two first because whenever you select rack number one, the very top rack, uh, that bit's going to go down into the ground. It stops, but... It goes into the ground, so be careful. And then we have the emergency stop button here. By the way, you can raise that back up. And if we uh, come over here, the number two button is gone. So we have to do basically everything in reverse order if you want it to go back to where it was. We have emergency stop, so we're like, eh. Yeah. yeah, that kind of happens. <laughs> and then we have a reset. So like if something just wild and crazy happens, then uh, you can easily oh i hit reset and it oh, there it is haha -ha. uh, the smaller one works a little bit faster i would say i mean the speed as far as lowering things and raising them goes it's well the the same it also says to make sure that you reset in between uh times of doing this it's a little confusing but yeah, it is what it is didn't i start this off by saying that it was easier than it looked Eh, it's not too bad. This one is a little bit interesting, though. This is the Earth Fruits Storage. Now, this will hold uh, potatoes, sugar beets, carrots, parsnips, and red beets. So if you've got the uh, premium DLC, you're good to go there. Uh, it'll hold either 250,000 liters of two different products, or it will hold 500,000 liters of one product. But it won't hold all of the products at that same time, which is five different things. 
and I'm not sure why. That doesn't make any sense to me. It could hold 50,000 liters or, or 100,000 liters of each one and hold all five. Uh, but yeah, that will only do up to two things at once. Next, we have the multi-purpose sheds. Now, these uh, say that they're in silos. However, they are not. If we go to silos, none here. However, they are in containers. What these are is they basically do individual things that like the multi-fruit buying station would do. So, for example, I place down the salt shed. However, we also have a sugar beet shed, wood chips, stones... Lime and potatoes. Uh, I would definitely say a lime would be kind of cool, and it's kind of nice to see this with, like, uh, salt, for example. Uh, this type of shed is actually used not far from where I live. This is how they store the salt for the, the uh, winter, putting it on the road. So this is kind of cool. Next, we got a pack, the three-sided farm pack. This includes a couple silos as well as a production, a house, and a shed. And some of these are kind of flipped around a little bit, but all good let's take a look at the house first house looks good unfortunately no interior so heads up on that one also personally i'm not quite sure about the name three-sided uh farm pack yeah all of them do have four sides this one has a bunch of sides infinite sides i don't know there is no trigger for this so if you want to know what's in it you will have to go into your production chains uh, this will do silage out of grass hay chaff and straw. Not a lot do straw, so this is very nice to see. It'll also hold 2 million liters, giving you plenty of storage in there. About 8 million liters total, and then another 2, so 10. How cool is that? That's awesome. All right, moving along through here, we have the shed. Now, this is a big shed. It's a L-shaped shed, and then this is kind of where everything is. So we've got this massive area right here, plus a, a, a hayloft up top. Then we can open up this door and then we've got another door over here and this opens up to the entire area looks kind of cartoony uh, at least in my game but it's not too bad and then we have a couple silos over here the first silo is right yeah and then the second one is right here it's actually really massive on the inside this one's a full silo system yeah. Those are going to be the shed and farm silo. That's the one on the left here. And then we have the storages, which is going to be on the right. Now that's going to hold 250 bales. And then this one right here holds, where's my trigger down at the bottom? Tell me, please. Really? All right. If you're wanting to get some ideas about how to lay all of this out, they actually have a couple things on their uh, page right here where you can kind of see everything laid out in a specific way back at farm sim 19 we would have packs like this all together so you just place down one thing uh however here we have what five different pieces hang on now this is showing six pieces the mod hub online and the mod description showing five pieces but there is actually another piece okay so there's also a cattle shed if you guys want to go in there again it matches with everything so that is nice big open shed area here and then you've got your area for your cattle, even milk. Oh, <laughs> game about froze right there. I don't know what was going on with that. We can hold 80 cattle through here. And then this is your area around towards the back. No grass is down, so you have to paint that in. But you know what? I prefer that. Next new one for all platforms is the Metal Garage. This is from Ikas, I-K-A-S. And I use their buildings almost exclusively on my Ravenport uh, Let's Play, so yeah. This one looks real good. It's also color changeable. Uh, around the outside, the stuff that's white, the siding, that cannot be changed. However, stuff like the top can be changed. So that is pretty cool. Tons and tons of color options. Even a nice bright pink on there. And uh, I'm still convinced that's DJ Gohan Blue. <laughs> awesome shed. And if you want a house, we have the small Polish house. It's cost you 22500 bucks, And that uh, kind of is what it is. Again, no interior. And if you want a garage to go along with your house, well, we have the old Polish garage. This costs you a little bit more, $35,000, as a place to store your machines. Next up, we have just such an insane mod, and I think this is such a cool idea. Rent your stable. This is from Farmer 5 Tom, and basically what this is, is it allows you to rent out space in buildings or outside your farm. These are generators. So at the end of the day, these are going to generate income for you. So we jump into productions, we jump into generators, and then you can see here, we've got everything. $2,800, $800 a month. 
just for storing this. It costs $600. Then we have uh, the gardening thing down here and then all kinds of stuff. We have carpentry stuff here and then uh, warehouse interior rentals. If you want to like throw stuff inside one of your sheds and be like, yeah, I'm holding it for a friend. But they can pay you. <laughs> this is so cool. We do have some outdoor stuff as well, like parking lot spaces, $2,160 a month. Imagine this, but like on a map that you've completely customized, you don't have to create a parking lot anymore. Just put this down and you get money. That I play different than most people though. So. <laughs> but to me, I'm like, oh sweet, another easy way to cheat. <laughs> anyway, very cool mod, very cool idea. Uh, they're basically generators. The whole idea is that you're renting out the space that you own to other people, but you can leave it forever. And your last mod for all platforms is the American Water Tower from Squiggles. The new free source water. Bring your trailers and fill them up to the top. It's going to cost you 1200 bucks. It can be found in containers. And because America is really murka, we've got an awesome bald eagle at the top. Yeah! And we've got a couple new maps for all platforms. First one is uh, Altaiki. Uh, A-L-T-E-I-C-H-E. -E. It's not English. I don't know how to say those letters in that order in a word that makes sense to me. Nonetheless, uh, this has gotten a lot of attention and a lot of traction super duper early. When I'm recording this, it's like, I don't know, an hour after mods released and it's already got 65 votes. It's running 4.7, so it looks like some lows, some, uh, a lot of highs though. It's also a very small map as well. If we zoom all the way out, this is a two or a one X map, two kilometer by two kilometer. So this would be maybe I don't know, half of that, two thirds of that, something around there. Uh, as far as things that we own, we've got 35, 147 and 31. It's a couple fields for us, as well as our main farm area. Now the thing is, you can see the way that this is lined up in the color like this. Uh, that's going to be like a farm land area versus field. Does that make sense? Uh, there's a few farms on here, five different farms on this tiny little map. There's also quite a few uh, required mods. So as always, we will talk about those. It's not half as many as the uh, second map. So yeet. As far as purchasable lands go, here is everything that you can purchase. I've gone through and kind of bought it all. So we do have a nice little area here off to the left hand side, which is kind of interesting way off there on the left. It is built on a flat area and then kind of built up around all the way around. If you want an easier look at some of where the farmlands are, just go into your active workers area and just look for these little areas like this. For example, we've got our house there over through here. We've got another farm with another house and old silo stuff through there. Uh, then up here again, same thing. So look for those areas. You'll be able to find the plot you want. Here's your season's growth calendar. In case you're curious about that, doesn't look like we have any new crops for this. And new farmer mode brings us a lot of equipment, a couple different trailers, headers, plow, uh, smaller equipment, and then some other equipment that you may not expect like slurry tankers or uh, forage wagons, balers, stuff like that. Pretty cool. As always, here are your required mods. And your second map and final new one for all platforms today is Alpen Hill. This is located uh, from the modders home country of Austria. On the map, you've got 85 fields. We've got meadows and forestry areas ranging in size from small to uh, large, they say. I think uh, medium probably to this community. Uh, we've got a couple other things, BGA and supermarket, agriculture trade, fish farm, stuff like that. Fish farm, that's not base game. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of required mods for this one, as I mentioned. Here is your PDA, and here's everything that you get in new farmer mode down here on the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, fields two and five, plus farm, farmland 92, that is your main farm area. Whole lot of stuff on here. Unlike most maps, this one does allow you to buy the entire thing and farmland 255 here, or sometimes farmland number one, as it's called, uh, the outside of the map is zero dollars. So you can buy that and you're good to go. Here's your growth calendar for this. We do have a custom growth calendar and it looks like we have a new crop clover. And as far as new farmer goes, we've got some smaller equipment. This is an alpine map, so expect equipment like that, though we do have a little bit of forestry. And as always, here are your 16 required mods. Let's jump over to some updates for all platforms now. And we start with the Fit 900 Vario S4 version number three. Interior's been reworked, exterior revised, added LED beacon lights, decals overworked. Don't overwork your beacons. They've changed our decals, changed the name of the Fit 900 Vario S4 and added IC support. And we have an update to the Anthem 6x4 pack version 1.5. Color options been added for 
for the tanker and grain trunk versions. Tanker version fixed, front wheel suspension readjusted, and three-point attacher option added. Plus, Carrot Coeco Care version 1.1 added new configuration for fill volume and added new rim color. OB Hopper Trailer Pack version 1.3 visual errors corrected on the model and added one type of trailer. Cody VE 8000 1.1 fixed various bugs and added manure system support on PC. Greenhouse Modular version 1005 buy more pallets. Do it. They've also readjusted the tip collision for the BHKW. Recipes have been changed or adapted. Storage error changed or adjusted and trigger substrate mod module enlarged i i got one of those next up animal product warehouse version 1.1 new storage system installed a very cool mod the wood pellet factory version 1.1 enlargement of the zone without pellets under tremis one what enlargement of the tremis uh, one trigger enlargement trigger pellet bag increased production to 10 pallets of pellets per day unloading a bells of wood authorized on trimmer in trimmus one weight of empty pallets reduced to 170 kg problem of brilliance of the animation of the bags in the factory added detail to the ground reduction of the shine of wood cladding factory collision correction revised the blue rack texture and added the lizard energy logo to the pallet Pellets. Next, the hall with cooling chamber version 1.2. New object storage installed to the other buildings for storing bells and pallets. We've got new doors and changed all halls, which can now be found under silos. Next to last, Universal Crusher 2.1. All input products can now be purchased as pallets at the shop. Player spawn point changed and all products can be sold at the sell point. Age your last update for all platforms. The front shed version 1.1. Fix light disappearing when not active. Change of lights. Increase the light field and added decorations. Your only new one for PC and Mac players today is a Teagle mod. This is the Teagle Tomahawk C120 from JHHG Modding. It was also a collaboration with Sid Modding as well. However, he is not credited on this model specifically. Holds 5,000 liters and it says it holds straw, corn, wheat, and barley. We'll take a look at that. 180 horsepower is required on here and it's supposed to be a bell shredder at the end of the day. So let's see if that's exactly what it is. Let's check it out. Let's go ahead and unfold this guy and see if there's anything else we can turn it on but not yet it's still showing as a straw blower so there is that we will take this use our power tools mod and drop it in i guess please let me drop it there we go is it working it is working all right and then we can unload here very nice, very, very nice. It's wild to believe that all of this straw is located within that bale. I know it's pressed, but dang. So now I'm interested, uh, how is this gonna work with the rest of the stuff? Let's see, we got straw here. So this will take loose straw. Let's take this. And then I guess we can slowly <laughs> move the straw out if I quit pouring that there. Uh, that's holding a lot, actually. That holds a ton. Yeah, that's that's a whole lot. All right, what about that corn, though? Corn in. And that is different. What do we have here? This is pig food. Okay, so corn in, pig food out. What about wheat? It also says it'll do wheat and barley. And we will kick that out and it is ah, making straw. I'm assuming barley is going to do the same thing, but you know, I just kind of figured I'd check it just in case. Yeah, Barley does the same. Rounding out mods, today we have an update for PC and Mac players. Two of them, in fact. The first was the Crowfoot's K700 version 1003. Mod support IC added passenger animation from internal camera and external camera. Updated and optimized the sounds. Fixed the operation of the linkage with the trail devices, the help of a triangle. New custom vehicle shader, fixed license plate, illumination, and the 3D model of the tractor has been improved. It's your last update for PC and Mac players and your last mod today. Animal food overview version 112 small code corrections fix the problem that in rare cases the action buttons were not available and cz translation has been added and that is it i hope you enjoyed this one if you did drop a like on it get subscribed if you do enjoy the goham fam double check out notification bell as well that way you never miss daily farming simulator videos here on the channel having a great time I say daily i missed a day yesterday didn't i mostly videos for every day here 
of the channel. Uh, we got a great weekend for you lined up, as well as the podcast. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Otherwise, have a great day. Have a great weekend. We'll see you later.